Welcome to the Fierce as Fuck podcast. I'm your host, Amanda King, and I'm here to teach anybody who wants to fucking listen how to have the audacity to say fuck it to societal standards and live their most authentic life. This podcast is dedicated to bringing sexual conversations from behind closed doors onto the main fucking stage. Because sex, masturbation, squirting, guess what? It's all fucking normal. And by bringing these conversations to the forefront, we help people feel less alone in this world. We help them feel safe. We help them gain their power back, step into their confidence, and have the ability to express themselves authentically as fuck in this world. Because it takes fucking audacity to be your truest self. And we, we have boatloads of audacity up in this bitch. So let me ask you this. Are you ready for some epic shit? Hello, everybody. So I'm back with another question. And this one is so good that I knew I needed to dedicate a podcast episode to it like a few weeks ago, but my, when this was sent, but my energy was such shit. And I wanted to make sure that I actually just came with the right energy for this one, because I think this topic is so unbelievably fucking important. So it says, just curious if you have any advice on teaching our daughters about their bodies. I know it's not necessarily right to tell them not to touch themselves, but I am lost because as a 30 year old, you are, you are more or less introducing me to masturbation. It just isn't something that has ever been talked about. My girls are years from that stage, but I found myself wondering how I can guide them and make them comfortable in their bodies in general, not just sexually. And the reason I wanted to talk about this is because I have uh, four nieces, three who recently just hit puberty in the last year, and one that is 10 years old. And this is just something that every day I become more and more aware of the conditioning that girls undergo from such a young age into shaming and hating their bodies. And I knew I always struggled with it growing up. Um, but now to even see it being emulated in my nieces makes me so fucking mad. And it makes me so just, I don't know, deflated or defeated or just, it makes me sad. And I just want to have this discussion because I feel that younger girls deserve better than what we were given growing up. And so sex is never an easy topic to discuss with children, um, especially because sex is already taboo. And then you pull into question of like, hey, like what is the appropriate age of learning about sex? Like I remember I think I was nine years old when I asked my dad what porn was. Um, I had seen a Simpsons episode or something and I had said, dad, what's pornography? And he was like, well, where did you hear that word? And I said, the Simpsons. And instead of talking to me about it, he basically just banned me from watching the Simpsons for a month or so. I remember the first, my mother and father never gave me the birds and the bees talk um, I basically learned everything from un- MTV's Undressed. I don't know if you guys remember that TV show. <laughs> Growing up, the first time my mom found out I had sex, a condom wrapper fell out of my book bag. And because she's super fucking passive aggressive, she like stuck it in, I had gotten McDonald's or something, and she stuck it in the trash and told me to go get the trash out of the car. And my condom wrapper was sitting in there, but she never spoke to me about it. She never talked to me about it. And... <clears throat> I grew up with a family of women, my older sister and my mom, who also grew up in this diet craze mentality of never being thin enough, um, never being good enough in a way because they were never thin enough. And they're like Weight Watchers fanatics. I remember my mom doing the cabbage soup diet when I was younger because I used to smell the fucking shit out of the house and them always calling themselves fat and always saying things like I still, my sister to this day, who has three daughters will, will label foods as bad, or will say to her daughters, 
oh, well, luckily you just like played four games of lacrosse because you just ate that. And I am just, I can't, I can't, I can't. Because all I keep thinking of is every time something is said like that, do you know how much young girls especially soak that shit in? When it's something that negatively impacts their body, it is like they absorb it like no other. You can tell a little girl how beautiful she is and how her body is just perfect. And all of a sudden she'll hear her mother call herself fat and she emulates her mother. She loves her mother. And the second she thinks, oh my God, if my mom thinks she's fat, she probably thinks that I'm fat. And then all of a sudden that little girl is now becoming obsessed with her weight and dieting or stealing diet pills like I used to when I was younger. And it's just, it's such fucking bullshit. It is literal bullshit. So to break down the question before I go on about a fucking 90 minute rant about how society pisses me off, let's discuss how to get your children or how to have these conversations with your daughters and make them feel safer in their bodies. Number one, no age is too young to talk to your daughter about her body, meaning not giving nicknames to her body parts, right? Um, Telling her that what's happening to her body is normal. Already kids find this shit awkward as hell. They their bodies are changing. Kids' bodies change all the time. And it's such an awkward experience to live through. Every single one of us has been through it and it was awkward. And the last thing we wanted to do was talk to our fucking parents about it. Even if my mom would have come in and had the sex talk with me, I would have probably died. My sister tried talking to her daughters about periods and holy fucking shit, both of them lost their mind. It's an awkward conversation regardless. But the thing is, we as an older generation need to push through the awkwardness and deal with it so that our children, our nieces, our nephews, our relatives feel better about themselves. So there is no, like there, the second your daughter gets out of the womb, it is letting her know that her body is beautiful, despite what society is going to tell her, because society does push one type of body type onto women. When we were, when I was going through puberty, it was the um, Paris Hilton style body. So like super tall, super thin, even like Nicole Richie was like 120 pounds and they called her fat all the time because next to Paris Hilton, like who's what 105 pounds been five foot 10, like anybody would look bigger. And so Right now, we look at the Kardashians, right? Skinny ass waist, huge tits, huge ass, all plastic, right? It's not even a realistic body type, but that's ideal. So that's what's being pushed right now. And so your daughters are going to grow up and just dis- grow up. And unless they have one of those body types, and even if they do, they're going to believe it's not good enough because society tells them it's not good of us, good enough because society told us. It wasn't good enough. So not only are they dealing with society telling them they're not good enough, they're dealing with hearing us talk about, like talk shit about ourselves all the fucking time about how we need to lose a few pounds. My sister says that all the time. Mommy needs to go on a diet or how we need to um, fit into these new clothes or how we need to work out more or how we need to go buy makeup because our circles are too dark underneath our eyes or we need to go buy the skincare product because our face is breaking out too much. <clears throat> they are getting all of the shit society says and then generational shit as well because we have fucking issues. And they say that not to demean us in any way, but if we're gonna have a realistic conversation about little girls looking at their bodies and accepting them, we have to recognize that as adults, we don't even do that shit. And yet we look at children and we want them to be better than us. And yet we won't step into that role and become better ourselves for ourselves, which ultimately causes a ripple effect onto these children. So if you're sitting here And you were someone who's like, I love my daughter. I just want her to feel beautiful all of the time. And then you're ripping apart your body and yourself in front of her 24 seven, no matter what you do, she will never feel beautiful because she looks at you and thinks you are the fucking world. And you were the most pretty person in the entire world. And she thinks you're perfect. And if you destroy yourself in front of her, you are destroying her right along with you. 
And I know that's really hard to hear, but that's the reality of it. Little girls emulate their mothers. <clears throat> they want to be their mothers. So if their mothers are constantly, or their aunts or whatever, their older sisters, <laughs> if they're constantly saying how shitty they are, little kids are going to absorb that. And that's all that they're going to believe is, oh my God, this person, this role model, this person I want to be hates themselves. And how can they hate themselves? I love them so much. So something must be wrong with me too, if they believe something's wrong with them. And so to be able to help your daughters, you got to stop talking shit about your fucking selves all the time. And number two, just letting them know that everything their body is going through is normal, is normal. When they start asking questions about their body, addressing those questions head on and making it not awkward. The worst thing, and I get messages too of like, well, what if my kids walk in on me having sex? Obviously stop what you're doing, but don't make it fucking weirder than it already is. The reason sex becomes so taboo and our bodies come so taboo is because we make it tab taboo by making it awkward and not talking about it and not addressing it head on. And I understand that body changing and growth and fucking sex and masturbation are all topics that can be awkward, but they're only awkward because you're making them awkward. If you make them typical conversations, that is when the awkwardness kind of pushes away. And it might not at first, especially if you're talking to a 12 year old girl about an orgasm, if she asks, that could be awkward for her. She might be like, Ooh, I don't like that. But if you sit here and you're like an orgasm is when a woman feels pleasure and her body reacts to that pleasure and there is nothing wrong with it. And it's a good thing. And it's nothing to, to feel ashamed about. Every woman experiences it. There are different levels of it. And like, if you have any more questions, always feel free to come to me and ask. If you just answer, and you don't need to give kids every fucking detail. I'm not going to sit here and say to my nieces, there are 12 different types of orgasms. Let me list the 12 different types. Oh, what's squirting? Let me list that. Like, I'm going to just tell them what they need to know to feel safe. So that is, hey, if this is like, you may start experiencing sexual urges. I think like 13 or 14 was when I started really having those urges and not knowing what to do or who to talk to or whether it would not, it was safe. I mean, I remember, I think I was 14 when a guy was saying something about masturbating and I laughed. And so did my best friend and we walked away and I looked at her and I go, what's masturbating? And she goes, I don't know. I only laughed because you laughed. I thought you knew. Neither of us knew. We were like 14 at the time. No one had that discussion with us. And so from a young age too, kids will start exploring themselves and not making them feel ashamed about it. My best friend, her, was it her sister has a son who would always touch himself. And so she would say to him, like, do not touch yourself in public. If you want to do that, go ahead, go into your bedroom, close the door. But just, that's not something we do in public. She would never shame him. She, but she would set those boundaries with him, which I really respect because you shouldn't feel ashamed of touching your body. And I understand, I think he was like seven at the time, maybe even younger, but he started to recognize that it wasn't something bad. It was just something he wanted to do in private. And when we put shame and we put guilt on top of what they're feeling in an already super confusing fucking time, that ends up making them feel like something is wrong with them. I remember like one of the first, I think mini orgasms I ever had, I was dating some guy in like eighth grade and I was like grinding on him a little bit. Like we were both fully clothed and I started to feel it and I didn't understand what was happening. And I was like, what the fuck is happening? But I knew it felt good. So I didn't want to stop it. And then it started to like happen, happen. And I like shut it down instantly. And then I felt really bad afterwards and dirty and gross because I didn't know what the fuck was going on? Because we don't talk to little girls about orgasms. We talk to boys about ejaculation. We talk to boys about self-pleasure and masturbation. We don't have those same discussions with girls. And so little girls start feeling these feelings and they're already confused as fuck. Their body's changing. And then now they're at the state where they're just like, what's happening to me?
And then they go because they have that rush of adrenaline and oxytocin and all of those feel good feelings. But what comes right after instant shame and regret, because they don't know what just happened to their body. No one has told them about it. They've never experienced it before. Therefore they become afraid of it and they become guilty. Like they shouldn't be feeling it. I actively, I'm 37. I don't think I actively started masturbating until I was 25, 27, wait, 25 ish. And then I have never masturbated more in my life than I currently do in the last year, uh, all because of body acceptance, body, like just respect and allowing myself to feel pleasure. 36 to 37 people. I had puberty at 12. Like I didn't know what was going on with my body because no one told me. So just letting girls recognize that everything they're feeling is normal, that they are safe in feeling it. And then they shouldn't feel shameful because what's going to happen is they're going to run into all these kids who are being taught the complete opposite or not being taught at all or being miseducated, right? Miseducated children turn into miseducated adults, people. So these little boys who are running around saying, squirting is urine, it's all pee, are miseducated and no one checks them and no one has that conversation with them. So what do they do? They make girls feel like shit. They tell girl if she squirts on him, oh my God, I can't believe you peed on your face. I have grown ass men on a daily basis saying shit like that on my reels every time I talk about squirting. Those were miseducated children. And now they're out there spreading this misinformation, this miseducation out into the world, shaming fucking women. Do not, I don't want to say do not. I always come so aggressive with that. My apologies. Know that if you do not speak to your children about this now, one, they're gonna, they're not going to feel safe in their bodies. And that's what we don't want. Number two, they're going to try to find that information elsewhere. Where are they going to look? Porn. Because they're going to Google what happens to this. And a lot of times they're going to find a porno where a girl is squirting across the room, or they're going to find a porno where a guy is doing some fucking weird shit to a girl and they're going to feel like they have to look like that, be like that, act like that. They're going to go online (laughs) or watch TV and figure it the fuck out if no one has this conversation with them. And then they really don't know what's going on. I don't think I fully accepted having an orgasm as like what it was, which was an orgasm until I was in college. Probably when I was 20, 21, maybe. The first time I ever squirted, I was about 21. Um, and I had no fucking idea what my my boyfriend at the time was like, do you know what you just did? No, bro, I didn't. I fucking did. I had never felt it or done it before. And so like 21 years old, and I didn't even know what was going on with my body. I was miseducated. No one sits you down in health class and says, hey, let's explore the female body. This is a vulva. This is a clit. This is the vaginal canal. You get a little bit of an anatomy lesson, but you don't get, hey, if you touch this, it feels really fucking good. If you, if like there are 12 or four different types of orgasms that can happen in the vaginal canal, right? Oh, the anus. Yeah. It can also be used for sex. No one talks about this. Sex ed is very uh, procreation focused, right? I always think of mean girls don't have sex or you'll die. You'll get chlamydia and then you'll die. Everybody take a condom. Um, it's very, very procreation focused. And so When it becomes procreation focused or abstinence focused, we're not teaching our children. We're once again, just leading more miseducated children that turn into miseducated adults. People who have to wait into their thirties to discover masturbation because they couldn't talk to their teacher and ask their teacher questions. They don't teach you about female orgasms in high school or middle school. I think the first, my niece just went through eighth grade health and 
they talked about periods mostly. And then I think she, I was like, they talk about sex. And she's like, I mean, they talked a little bit about it, but they don't really get into that until 11th grade. And then in 11th grade health, it's not much. It's, hey, let's put a condom on a banana, right? Here, this is like spermicide. And this is the, this is how creation happens. Like the fucking sperm goes into the egg and boom, you got a baby. Here's ways to protect against having a baby. But there's nothing in, hey, this is what female pleasure is. This feels good on a woman. They talk about male orgasms. Of course they do, because it's ejaculation and it causes procreation. So we have to talk about men ejaculating. So men are like, oh yeah, haha, this is great. I am allowed to feel this pleasure. It's spoken about openly because it is part of procreation. It's part of my pleasure. But we don't talk about female orgasms because it's not part of procreation which is not fair. So then we have a bunch of boys who grow up in this world feeling like they have the right to feel pleasure and go around and be with people and explore that pleasure. And we have a bunch of women or and or girls who feel ashamed of all of that pleasure. And then when they do feel that pleasure, feel like dirty sluts and whores afterwards because they're not supposed to be. And so just having these conversations with your kids and just making it fucking normal. I said to my niece the other day, I said, if you need to ever talk to me about something that you're too embarrassed to talk to your mom about, or you need to, you need someone to talk to, come to me, talk to me. I'm always here to help you. And my nieces don't, well, three of them out of four of them don't know that I teach and, and, and speak about sex. My one niece follows me on Snapchat. She is uh, my brother's daughter and she grows up in a house of boys. She's the only girl and she is, how old is she? She's 13. Uh, she's turning 13, I think. And she follows me on Snapchat. And I'm pretty sure if my brother knew what I spoke about on Snapchat, his fucking head would come off his fucking body in about 12 different directions because she follows me. And she watches all of them. I know she does. But I would rather her listen to me talk about sex and listen to me talk about pleasure and toys from someone that she knows, that she loves, and that she looks up to, normalizing it and making her feel safe in her body than her to learn about it online. I'm pretty sure some of her friends follow me too. And I don't care that they are 13 and they are following me. It is better we teach them now than let them figure it out on their own and hate and shame their bodies. I have 16 year olds, 17 year olds. People are messaging me about having their first time ever having sex and not being able to have an orgasm. What's wrong with me? What? I don't care if they're 13. I don't like, let them learn from me, from someone who's going to say it in, and focus on safety and not focus on glorifying having to look a certain way during sex. They're going to learn and they're going to find out anyway. Let you be the person they find out from rather than some fucking moron on the internet. I mean, granted, people could call me a fucking moron on the internet. I am not certified in sex education. I am not a fucking doctor. I am just out here trying to have conversations to make people feel safe in their bodies, especially girls and women. So if a bunch of children, teenagers, better way of putting it, want to come onto Snapchat and watch my stories and feel safe about themselves, it's all that fucking matters. I know that if my niece ever has a question, she's going to ask it. I know that my niece, who also her mother um, was 16 when she had her 16 means she's three years away, not even 50. So she got knocked up at 15. So she's two years away from where her mom was when her mom got pregnant with her because her mom wasn't educated. I would rather her learn from me and make it normal than for her to listen to her stupid friends at school. Because her friends are stupid. <laughs> and I don't know, like any of her friends personally, I mean this in general, children, <laughs> stupid children come from stupid adults. And so if you don't teach your children these things, or you don't provide the safe environment for your children to come to you with knowledge or with questions, then your kids are going to find it elsewhere. And if you 
if you struggle having these conversations with them, if you struggle with these topics, or you just feel like your kid's going to be like, I can't talk to my mom about this or that, find another figure in their life that they can talk to. Someone that they could go to and they can speak in confidence with and, and, and to be able to talk to them about it. I remember going on the pill when I was 16, I had sex twice with my boyfriend at the time, lost my virginity to him. And I was so terrified to ask my mom to take me to go get the pill because once again, my mom's super passive aggressive. (laughs) And so I was afraid she never tell me about sex. So I was terrified to go tell her. So I went to Planned Parenthood by myself. My boyfriend came with me. I remember I was in the appointment and it was a female doctor. And I told her, I was like, I had sex twice. Um, It wasn't protected sex. I don't want to get pregnant. I don't want to be one of those people who get pregnant. And the nurse, the doctor, pardon me, said to me, you know, I just want to commend you. You've had sex twice and you're in here and you're getting on the pill. And she said, do you tell your mom? And I said, I can't tell my mom. And she goes, well, your mom would be really proud if you did, because this is the best thing you could have done. I had to receive validation from a fucking stranger because I was too afraid to say anything to my mom because she made it uncomfortable to talk about sex. Don't make your children need to seek validation of strangers about their body. Be the person who validates it or give them someone to validate it for them. you got to have these conversations with them because once again, they're going to find out whether you do or you're not. I don't remember technically how I found out all of the in, ins and outs, no pun intended, of sex, but I found out through TV, through freaking AOL chat rooms, for Christ's sakes, through fucking literally fucking people. I learned more and more about it through other people, but like not about myself, not about what I liked, not about what I needed or desired. That's not right. It should have been a conversation no matter how awkward it was. And so have these conversations with your daughters and your sons, right? Let's hold young boys accountable and have these open conversations so that they understand their partners better. And they're not miseducated kids running around making women feel like shit about their bodies because they don't understand them. They're gonna find out anyway. So be the person they find out from or find someone for them and make it normal because it is fucking normal, guys. Everyone in this world masturbates. Everyone in this world has touched themselves at some point or another. Every single person on this world typically has sex. We all are experiencing the same things. Yes, certain things get us off that others don't, and there are different kinks and different fantasies and all of that shit. But ultimately, we are all having sex. It is a normal thing. We would literally not exist on this planet without it. So why are we making it so weird? Don't make it weird. Make it normal. Have conversations with them so that they understand, hey, this is a safe place for me to ask questions. And if I feel awkward about it, like there are ways to work around it. If your kid feels awkward talking to you about it, have them write it down and then write something back to them, right? Have a little comment box of sex questions and like it's anonymous. So no one knows, right? You'll know by their handwriting, but make it anonymous, right? Find ways to make them feel that they can talk to you or someone, an adult role role figure, role model, an adult figure that they feel safe coming to and communicating with. Have the conversations. Hopefully this helped. If you know someone who needs to hear this, feel free to share this episode. If you have any other questions, follow up, any of that, feel free to message me. You can DM me on Snapchat. Um, what are the, I'm like, what are the other fucking platforms? I'm on everything. Snapchat, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, all are linked below in the show notes. Thank you so much for being here. I hope this helps someone. And of course, as always, this is my two cents. You don't need to listen. You don't need to take all of my advice, but just always remember if you're not the one talking to them, someone else is, and you can't control what they know. 
that way. And you don't know all of the terrible, miseducated bullshit they could be being taught. I love you guys so much. I will see you in the next episode. Thank you so much for listening to the Fierce As Fuck podcast. And some parting words for you today. Remember this, no matter how hard society pushes you down, no matter how many times you fall, as long as you get the fuck back up, they can never stop you. You are unfuckable with. You will win. Don't allow this world to dictate how you show up in it. Don't allow society to make you bend the knee. Instead, make them bend theirs. And don't forget, if you like what you heard, go on to iTunes and Spotify and leave your girl a review. Until next time, my